Hello everybody, I am the Chubby Gourmet. Today we're going to be tooking, cooking, tooking with my tookus. <laughs> we'll be cooking with my tookus. Nope, strike that. We are going to be cooking an authentic Thai green curry with chicken. The ingredients alone, looking at them, make me salivate. It's gonna be a great episode, stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome to our family. We are an international cooking, traveling, and eating channel. So if you enjoy those things as much as we do, subscribe, smash that notification bell so you get notified when we upload new episodes, and welcome aboard. So the first thing I want to talk about is making a green curry paste. Now you can easily go and buy some very good quality green curry pastes. I always like to make mine from scratch. So we're starting with some white pipe peppercorn seeds, not pipercorn, we don't need those today. Peppercorn seeds. I'm gonna be toasting some coriander seeds and toasting some cumin seeds. Two teaspoons of the coriander seeds, one teaspoon of the cumin seed. And I've got about half to one teaspoon of white peppercorns here. Why do I make my own when I can buy so many? Because I can custom tailor the flavor to what I like. Also, another thing you will hear a lot, especially from Thai cooks, moms, chefs alike, they always use a mortar and pestle to grind their pastes. I'm gonna show you, you don't need to. And if you enjoy using one, by all means, go ahead. I'm gonna start with a spice grinder, a good quality KitchenAid spice grinder, pan down, pan down, and a bigger food processor when I add the fermented shrimp paste and whatnot to it. The advantage I do wanna say of having a mortar and pestle is you could make very small quantities of curry paste that way. Because if you see on the food processor, you have to come up to a certain height before you even hit the blades. I'm not can use a mortar and pestle because I work out enough. I don't need another workout. 20, 25 minutes of effort. You will break a sweat. It is effort. You know, it's an electric stove, so it's going to take some time, man. All right, we got our toasted seeds. I'm going to put them right into the spice grinder. Oh, and it smells aromatic here already. Now I'm going to add about a teaspoon of cumin seeds. We're going to do the same thing, only different. And actually, while I'm at it, I might as well put my white peppercorns in there. Well, I'm only cumin. That smell of the cumin with the sweetness of the coriander seed is really a fine mix. Mmm. Ooh, too bad we can't smell it through the camera. So now in making our green curry paste, we've already toasted the cumin and coriander seeds and added the white peppercorn, corn, peppercorns. I'm having trouble with that word peppercorn today. The white peppercorns, and we ground them up in the spice grinder. I'm going to add cilantro root. Why do we use the root? Why not the stems? Why not the leaves? Well, each part of the plant tastes and smells like coriander. The roots in particular are a little more pungent coriander slash cilantro flavor, and there's a certain earthiness to it, which shouldn't be a surprise, it's the roots. If you do not have access to the roots, you can always just take the stems and use those. That's second best. You just need about three times as many stems to try to get that extra flavor. So it's not the end of the world, but like I said, I wanted this to be as authentic as possible. So I'm going to be adding to my spice grinder the roots now, and then I'm actually going to be adding what I make in the spice grinder to the food processor. I don't want any really moisture. So what we're going to be adding to make this paste is I've got three tablespoons of diced shallots. I've got about two tablespoons of ginger root. You should use galangal, which is Thai ginger. Slightly more pungent than you know, ordinary ginger, but I couldn't get any galangal, and it's okay to substitute it. It's really that close. These are chopped up Thai basil, and this is where a lot of the green color and the green curry comes from in, in the paste. These are Thai chilies. I've got about 15 of them chopped up in here, and I retain the seeds because I like that heat. And this is the zest, a couple of teaspoons zest. Should be zest of a kefir lime. I have kefir leaves, but I don't have the actual lime. So a kefir lime or a lime lime, it's all the same, but the leaves were hard to get and I got them. And that's gonna not go in the paste, but go in the cooking of the curry itself. And then of course there's lemongrass. You can't make a Thai curry without lemongrass. I've also got some minced garlic. I've got Thai fermented shrimp paste and just a little bit of salt. We don't need a lot of salt because we're gonna be using fish sauce in the curry itself, which is quite salty. So I'm gonna add maybe a teaspoon at most of my sea salt. I'm gonna throw in my roots. I'm just gonna scrape down the sides, give it one more go. Now I'm going to put in my lemongrass because there's not too much. There's a little moisture in there, but nothing crazy. 
and this is gonna take some scraping down and a little more effort, but I am so much happier doing it in here than in a mortar and pestle. Now is a good time to transfer to the food processor. I'm just getting this out. It's a little bit moist from the roots and the lemongrass. I'm gonna add my ginger, followed by my Marianne. I know that was pretty bad. <laughs> my shallots, or as Chef Ramsay would say, shallots. I'm gonna upset a lot of people today on this episode, won't I? And here is where most of the green from these hot Thai chilies. Oops, one's on the floor. Don't film me when I bend over to pick it up and throw it in here, okay? Oh, baby, that's lethal. <coughs> Two tablespoons of garlic. And I'm gonna include the recipe in the description, so don't worry if you're missing stuff. And I'm gonna put one teaspoon of the fermented shrimp paste. That gives it a whole new dimension of flavor. People new to Thai cooking often wonder, how could something so strong smelling, to put it nicely, taste good? When you add all the ingredients together, it's heavenly. Okay, I'm almost done. I wanna make note to you here, if it's a little dry and you wanna make it a little wetter or more pasty, very simple. Add a little bit of water. We're not making soup here, we're making a, a curry paste. That that is the consistency that we want. And that is the color, the green color that we want. So look at this, pan down, pan down. Not pilly. Look at that. That is a beautiful green curry paste, if I do say so myself. I can smell all the ingredients. Move over. Oh. <laughs> Plop. This is ready. Now we can go and actually make some food. I'm cutting up a spur pepper. I'm actually gonna semi-julienne this guy. I'm gonna cut him lengthwise like this. We're gonna chop up into quarters the little Thai eggplants. They're just eggplants. They are a little more bitter than the Western eggplants or Chinese eggplants known as jiezi, which is eggplant in Chinese. These are heavier, thicker. They don't need to be salted. If you salt your eggplant slices, if you're making like eggplant parm, you don't need to do any of that stuff with these. In fact, in Thailand, people will often just eat these raw as a snack item. I'm just gonna quarter these suckers. I'm gonna chop up my kefir lime leaves, which we're going to be adding to the curry. Once we make the curry, I'm gonna roll him. Exactamente. And we are ready. This was the thigh of the chicken because there's more fat, more flavor. If you're gonna use the breast, I highly recommend not to, but you wanna do a little preparation, like maybe a marinade or something before you use that. I like using the thighs, just as a side note. We already have an episode where we make some beautiful chicken breasts. Check out our episode. Uh, no, this side. Check out this episode, it's our beautiful breasts episode. You know, when I was married, I told my wife, hey, don't laugh at me behind my back. She goes, I don't. The funny stuff is in the front. I'm just measuring a cup here. If it's Goya, it has to be good. What I'm gonna do first, I've got a hot skillet. I'm gonna add about a half a cup of the coconut milk, and I'm gonna reduce that, try to get the oils to separate. That's step number one. Now, while this is reducing, when I get at least close to reduced, I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of our freshly made curry paste. And we're almost there. Any day now, any day. All right, this is thickened enough to my satisfaction. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of my wonderful homemade curry paste. Nice and thick coconut milk. And for about two minutes, I'm gonna keep stirring this. I know it doesn't look like much yet, but trust me, it's gonna be delicious. We're making a Thai curry today, obviously, but there's many types of curries out there. Vietnam has types of curries. India, of course. Comment below, let me know what kind of curry you love. I love curries of all kinds. All right, now I'm gonna add the chicken thighs that I so nicely butchered up. Well, a curry is a sauce, basically. And it's a sauce with some kind of a fat. In our case, the fat comes from coconut milk. In Northern India, it comes from ground cashew nuts with yogurt. So it all depends. It's a curry is a, a gravy, but it needs some kind of a fat. What I'm doing now is simply coating the chicken breasts with the coconut milk and the paste. And as I said, it's a green curry. It has that green tint. As you can tell, I'm pretty proud of that fact. I'm gonna add my kefir lime leaves. 
I'm gonna add my one cup of chicken stock and I'm going to add the rest of the coconut milk. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of palm sugar. Most important, one of the most important, about a tablespoon, I use Thai fish sauce. Out of fermented shrimp paste, I prefer Vietnamese, actually. Fish sauces, I prefer Thai. And it works out good, because I'm making a Thai dish today. So a good tablespoon. If I want a little more salt, I'll add a little bit more of the fish sauce. And let me raise the temperature up a little. We're gonna let this simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes. I say closer to 20 minutes. Now we play the waiting game. We're done simmering and cooking it. What I'm gonna do now is just do a little taste to see if I need to add any more fish sauce for salt. I don't believe so. It looks and smells exactly as it should. Absolutely perfect, if I do say so myself. What I'm gonna do now is crank the heat up and we're gonna bring the sucker to a boil. Once it's boiling, I'm gonna add, not a whole can, maybe just about eight ounces of bamboo shoots. And I'm going to add my chopped up Thai eggplants, sliced spur pepper, and a little more Thai basil. And stir it in, finish the cooking, and then we're ready to eat. Stay tuned. Gonna add in my bamboo shoots. I'm gonna put in my Thai eggplants, my spur pepper, and a little bit more Thai basil, because I love Thai basil. It's the right thing to do. And I'm gonna reduce the heat somewhat. I still wanna boil, but I don't wanna go overboard with that. Now we play the waiting game, but not for long this time. Another five to 10 minutes and we're done. So I've just taken it off the burner. Take a look at that. It looks, smells, and I do say tastes exactly as it should. The eggplants are nice and soft. Everything is cooked through. The chicken is done. It's good to go. So now I'm gonna plate it and the moment of truth. Now we're gonna give it a try. The smell, the look, everything looks perfect. When I call it a green curry, this actually does have a greenish tint. It's not gonna be like bright green. I guess you could make it that way if you wanted to do and really tried, but this is a typical green curry. I'm gonna try some of the curry sauce first. Mmm, oh, I don't wanna brag about it, okay? But so far, delicioso. Now I'm gonna grab some bamboo shoots. Mmm, now some chicken. I'm leaving you alone, I'm gonna go eat this. Ciao. And there you have it, Thai chicken and green curry. Authentic ingredients. The only not authentic is very minimal. The zest came from a lime, not a kefir lime, but I have kefir lime leaves in there, which actually came, I picked them from a Thai chef in town. He grows his own produce for his Thai restaurant where he's the head chef and owner. And he was kind enough to let me pick some kefir lime leaves fresh the other day. I used ginger instead of galangal, which is Thai ginger, extremely close in flavor. So not much of a substitution there. Otherwise it's 100% authentic. Thai eggplants, Thai chilies, Thai basil. I use the cilantro roots as I explained in the episode why that's important. Anyhow, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you like what you see, hit that like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you're made aware every time we upload. We upload every Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'd love to hear your comments. And until next time, hasta lasagna.